Good morning and welcome to Gates at Deanery Service. Let's start with a short prayer. As we come together today, let us be mindful of our words and actions and the impact they have on those around us. Let us seek God's wisdom and love to guide us in all that we seek to do today and in days to come. Amen. Great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living
Gracious God, you always make time for us. We are sorry that we don't always make time for you. When we are rushing around being busy, sometimes even when we are doing your work, we forget about you. We are sorry when we make our lives so full that there's no room left for you. No room to get away, to be in a quiet place with you. Forgive us, Lord, and help us not to hurry, but to slow down. To make space for you to dwell within us. And in that dwelling place, may we seek what you want us to do, and who you want us to spend time with. Help us to get the right balance, a right rhythm that is in tune with you. Amen. Even though we have gone astray, you are our shepherd, the one who brings us back to the fold. We are assured of your forgiveness, and we are set free in the knowledge that you always make room for us. Amen. I was buried beneath my shame Till I'm near you yeah. I was breathing but not alive All my fears I tried to hide It was my tomb Till I'm near you you called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into Freedom is all that I know
Today's Gospel is taken from Mark chapter 6 verses 14 to 29. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. King Herod heard about this, for Jesus' name had become well known, some were saying, John the Baptist had been raised from the dead, and that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said he is Elijah, and still others claimed he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, the man I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to, to listen to him. Finally, the opportune time came on his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. The king said to the girl, ask me for anything you want and I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, whatever you ask, I will give you up to half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once the girl hurried in to the king with the request. I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed, but because of his oath and his dinner guests, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl and she gave it to her mother. On hearing of this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Collect for this, the sixth Sunday after Trinity. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May I now speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Repentance isn't a practice that any of us enjoy. And when we are told that we need to repent, because we are living in a world where we are full of our own self-importance. For many, the instruction of being told to repent is largely considered to be out of bounds. But as Christians, we have to recognise the call to repentance as the primary part of the message of the gospel. It's only when we repent of sins and turn to Jesus that we can be forgiven and saved from the wrath of God. So this morning, as we come to Mark six fourteen to 29, we've read about a group of people who are fully committed to living for themselves. At the heart of the story is a king who has an affair and who was called to repentance by John the Baptist. And then in the 15 verses, we get an incredible view of the deceitfulness and destructfulness of sin 
as well as a stark reminder of the significant oppositions we can face as we stand for the thing of God in the world that has become rather rebellious against him. If you read the Gospel of Mark last week, and or heard the Gospel of Mark last week, you would have heard about the sending out of the Twelve on their first mission. The Gospel from Mark 6.30, we read of their return. So right in the middle we have this sandwich between their departure and their return. Is this a story of John the Baptist and his death at the hands of those who didn't like his message? The placement of the story is instructive, a reminder of the difficulties of the calling as we go out to speak on behalf of Christ. We must go with full knowledge of the opposition, of the opposition we will face. As the popularity of Jesus grows, so does speculation about who he was, who he really was. Some believe that he was the Old Testament prophet Elijah, who had prophesied to return, or a new prophet from God. Still others believed he might be John the Baptist, back from the dead. King Herod Antipas was the son of Herod the Great, the Herod who reigned when Jesus was born. Herod at Antipas was placed over a fourth of the kingdom when his father died. And he hears about Jesus. He fears that he is in fact John the Baptist, back from the dead. It's no doubt a sobering thought, born of guilty conscience, since Herod is the one who unjustly executed John. If we look at verse 17, Mark takes us back in time and fills us, in, fills us with some backstory about Herod's relationship with John the Baptist and the events that led to John's execution. One thing we don't fully understand from the passage alone is the complexity of Herod and his wife's relationship. We understand from other sources that Herodus was both Herod's niece and sister-in-law. Herod divorced his first wife and convinced Herodus to, to divorce her husband, who was Herod's half-brother, so they could actually marry. As a prophet of God, John not only spoke truth and called for repentance from the masses, but he was willing to confront even powerful leaders face to face. And this is a great example of what each and every one of us should look like to stand boldly for the truth of God. John called to repentance, left Herodus enraged. She is an example of the lens that we will go to in order to cover our sin. Sin makes each and every one of us irrational. She wanted John the Baptist dead. Herod's conscience is an, is an illustration of how complicated life can get if we live in sin. Herod wanted to appease his wife and he wasn't willing to repent of his sins. But he was intrigued by John and didn't intend to kill him. Sometimes we, are, we too are drawing to things of God and yet also tried to hang on to our sin. And it was at his own birthday party where Herod's sin compounded and forced his hand. In an effort to please his guests and win approval of others, Herod promised his stepdaughter, who was the entertainment of the party, whatever she desired. Sin is irrational and deceitful. For Herodes has started with an affair and now it has led to exploiting her daughter and conning her husband into killing a man. It has been said that sin will take you farther than you want to go. It will keep you longer than you want to stay and it will cost you more than you want to pay. This was certainly the case for Herod. His desire for Herodus 
ultimately led him to an unjust execution of a prophet of God. In the end, he determined that it was, be it was a better option to kill John the Baptist than to disappoint his wife and appear indecisive in front of his peers. John stood for the truth. He followed God faithfully and he died a martyr's death. But of course, his death was not the end for him or for the mission of God in the world. What John done was paved the way for Jesus and his death foreshadowed the death of Christ and it became of the death and the resurrection of Jesus that we have the hope of eternal life and a message worth dying for. So as we've learned this morning that the scriptures are very, very clear that as and if we stand for Christ, we will suffer. But we also know that while we may be despised by the kings in this life, through the fullness of time, we will reign with the king for all eternity. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? and makes Christ known in the world. We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Mighty God, we adore you. We thank you that we can come to you knowing that you care about each and every one of us and all our needs, however big or small. You created the heavens and the earth. You put stars into space and filled the mighty seas. Your power and your greatness is all around us, from mountain tops to the intricacies of a tiny flower. Thank you that your power is limitless. limitless. We are so small in comparison, but you love us all the same. We adore you, Creator God. Powerful God, forgive us when we have not used our power to influence for good, but for our own purposes. When our actions have hurt and excluded others. When we have allowed greed, fear and pride to get in the way. God, forgive us and let our thoughts, our words and our actions glorify you and reveal your presence and purposes. Father, we pray for those known to us who are suffering in whatever way. We pray for those who are sick, those who mourn, those who are in despair, for the homeless, those who live on the edges of society and those who have no hope. Lord, give us opportunities to reach out to these people in our communities and the courage to step out in faith. We pray for all schools in our deanery for all the staff, children and families concerned. We pray especially for those in year six making the big step of leaving primary school for senior. For all those in year 11 deciding which direction to go. We pray for all our churches in our deanery, for all the members, especially those who have not yet returned to their church service. Help us, Father, as we start to ease up on COVID restrictions. Give us wisdom and discernment as life returns to some sort of normality. We pray for all those involved with Passion for the Planet. Help us, Lord, to invite people to attend this community event in Christchurch later on in July and August. Give us a Passion for the Planet in our homes and communities.
and almighty God, we thank you for never, never giving up on us, even when we let you down. Thank you for your faithfulness and love. Thank you that your actions are always noble and selfless, drawing us in to sit beside you. Thank you that you love us, even when we get it wrong. And thank you that you used John the Baptist to bring many people to you. Help us to do the same. Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, from the very beginning of Genesis, we see the relationship between word and action. You spoke and it was so. As we near the close of today's gathering, in the days and weeks ahead, may we be aware of our words and actions. May the Holy Spirit guide us so that what we say and what we do builds up your kingdom and breaks down barriers. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. been held in your hands from the moment that I wake till I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Of God. 
Surround one another in the warmth of love. Enfold one another in the strength of prayer. Encourage one another in the journey of faith. Surprise one another in the wonder of life. And so bless one another as God blesses you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen.